Coming up, Jose Canseco bashed his way into baseball's record books. But will his own tell-all page turner leave a legacy of smashed reputations? The unabashed steroid user reveals what happened behind the scenes at the congressional hearings, gives up the juicy details about why he named names, and recounts his controversial past, including one personal tragedy that led him down the road to roids. That's right now on the show that's candid, sometimes controversial, and always entertaining. CMI, The Chris Myers Interview. Welcome to CMI. Thanks for joining us. Jose Canseco, our guest. Nice to see you again. Great to be here. All right. We've got a lot to, uh, a lot to cover. You're smiling, but uh, some serious stuff. Do you think baseball is better off since you came out with your steroid re revelations? I don't know. I don't know exactly what they've done. Um, I know that they came up with a sort of a three-strike rule. The commissioner, Bud the Sealy, commissioner, right, the third but, time right. is a lifetime ban, right, if you have a... But I'm having problems with that because uh, I've mentioned this before, and I was a perfect example of, of that. I was under house arrest, and they found a metabolite of a steroid in my system. And before they figured out what it actually was, I spent three months in jail. I'm afraid that some of these players who have probably stopped using steroids uh, will be tested and then a very strong metabolite will be found in their system. And I don't know if the test is going to show the difference between an active steroid in the system or, or a metabolite. And on that, they, they may be subject to, to some kind of fine. How long, you, you've been taking steroids for how many years now? Jeez. Uh, longer than you've been alive, no. Okay. Uh, Not that long. 20 some odd years. All right. Ago. And how long does it stay in your system or does it depend on the steroid? As simple as an answer or explanation. Absolutely. With Depend your personal experience. Yes. Depends on the steroid and how long you've been using a steroid. Uh, an oil based steroid uh, that's been used for years and years and years could stay in the system up, up to two or three years. All right. So the concept itself, though, of hey, if you fool around with steroids, you can get a lifetime ban. Don't you think that's a good thing for baseball? It's a good thing. And I'm sure that players are adhering to that and are definitely going to get off steroids, not just because uh, Major League Baseball has instituted this three-strike rule, but because Congress is watching. But there still is the issue of these individuals who have taken steroids, have gotten off steroids, and maybe tested positive. Congressional hearing. Uh, how do you think you, you did when you were there? I don't know. I, I, just, uh, I was very nervous when I first got there. Um, I had an opening statement, which I was extremely nervous. I mean, this is serious business dealing in front of Congress, and you're, on, you're under oath. So I just went there, uh, answered every question as truthful as possible, and uh, hopefully... You think people's view of you changed a little from this guy's a snitch, he's a rat, he's exaggerating to maybe there's something to his story? Um, definitely... You know, individual, the public fans are now realizing that this book I wrote is the absolute truth. Um, there will be more and more individuals coming out over time saying, yeah, you know, we agree with Jose Canseco. What he's saying is the absolute truth. Uh, the players that were involved that, that I spoke about, you have to understand it was never an attack on them. It was strictly an attack on Major League Baseball. Those players, did any of those players talk to you at, at the hearing? No. Rafael Palmero, Mark McGuire. Absolutely Kirchner. none. Did I have they not looked your way? No, they have not looked my way. I haven't heard from any representatives of Major League Baseball, the players, the players themselves, no one. Was there a death threat on your leg? There was one that I was aware of, and um, the FBI uh, locally took care of that. I don't really know what came of it, but I, I know it was taken care of. What, what kind of feelings did you have being at that congressional hearing? Were you in the same room with, with some of the players, Schilling, McGuire? The... No. No, I was completely secluded from all the players and from the representatives of Major League Baseball, and I heard that they were all in one room. Uh, does Mark McGuire deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? I truly believe he does. I mean, he's had an incredible career, uh, you know, even though he's had some injuries, uh, an incredible presence in baseball. I truly believe between Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, uh, the one year where the, the home run race was just shattered, brought back the game of baseball. But if they were using steroids, or allegedly, if anyone was on steroids, setting records, doesn't that taint the accomplishment? I don't know how people will view that. I have no idea how they will separate, uh, you know, the history of baseball in the past with what has happened recently. Will they say, okay, this was from the 80s to the 90s, the steroid era? I have no idea. 
Now, let's go back to Mark McGuire for a moment in the congressional hearing. If you were in his shoes, would you have responded the way he did? I don't know. I think because he did not admit or deny the use of steroids, I think it's going to linger on uh, for a very long time. If I were in his shoes, I just probably would have said, yes, I did. Everyone was using it. Let's put it behind us. Um, it was an era where if you did not use steroids, uh, I mean, you had to just keep up with the competition. So, uh, yeah, okay, I used it. Let, let's move on. Let's try to clean up the sport. Is there a part of you that is a, a ashamed a little bit for having to name names? Um, you know, I, I've answered this a million times, and people have to understand, my attack was never on these players. But these players at the time were the most, uh, you know, well-known, prevalent players in baseball. Well, my game plan was to have one of these players come over and take my side and say, listen, what Zay was saying is 100% true. Uh, you'd be willing to take a lie detector test uh, to say that the people you named and the things you talked about in the book are truthful, accurate. And I'm not talking about pay-per-view. I'm just saying so the people would know that you're being honest here. Absolutely. There's no ifs buts about it. All right. And the players that you named, Mark McGuire, you actually did inject him yes. with steroids. Yes, actually injected him physically. Yes. All right. How, how many other players would you say? Um, there are probably about three or four more others. Um, and we're talking 90, uh, what, eight, late 80s, 90s? We're talking about between late 80s and late 90s. Yes. All right. And when you say everyone else was doing it at that time, how many people do you think were using steroids in baseball? At the peak of steroid use in baseball, when I was around, I truly believed every 8 out of 10 players was using it in one way, shape, or form. And you think baseball was aware of it? No doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, Faye Vincent says he knew it was around. He was aware of it. And, you know, obviously he's not the baseball commissioner now. Bud Selig all of a sudden says, we didn't know it existed, which is an outright lie. The public's not going to believe that. The public is not going to swallow that. All right, but how about the side of you that says steroids is, is cheating? I mean, don't you feel... Gil, you were doing it before you ever got to the major leagues, right? Did you know it was wrong to do it? Um, or, or, or? And, and yeah, in those days, people, uh, players didn't really even know steroids were against, number one, the law, because no one really didn't know too much about steroids and um, the, the, the legalities of it. So you, are you taking steroids now? No, no illegal okay. steroids. No. I'm yeah. on probation, so. All right, and that, all right, that did land you in, in jail Correct. at some point. Uh, which I want to address. You were actually in jail with hardened criminals? Oh, yes. I was um, in jail for three months with, uh, you know, the worst that society has to offer. No, I, don't, I want to talk about uh, that, more on the, the steroid issue, and also remembering uh, your mom and the personal side of Jose Canseco when we continue here on CMI. We'll be right back. Coming up on the Chris Myers interview. Barry Bonds, and there is speculation. And I said, wow, there's only one way to put on 30 pounds of muscle in four or five months, period. Welcome back to the Chris Myers interview with Jose Canseco. I was um, in jail for three months with, uh, you know, the worst that the side has to offer. Welcome back to CMI with Jose Canseco. So you spent, what, three months in jail, roughly? Yes. And with, uh, what, murderers, convicted? Murderers, rapists, arsonists, uh, child molesters. Were you worried about your, uh, your safety in there? Um... You know, you always have to worry about that because you never know what's on these minds of these so-called, you know, well, they're hardened criminals. Um, so you were, you were always kind of looking over, over your shoulder. Definitely. Did it cross your mind that if I if I'd never dabbled with steroids, I wouldn't have wound up here? Well, absolutely. A lot of things cross your mind in jail because you have a lot, a lot of time to think about uh, certain issues. And I definitely had a lot of time to think about the book uh, that, I, that I finally wrote, Juiced. And, you, and the book changed. I mean, the NFL went before Congress. We talked about baseball. Uh, did you realize the impact it would have, I think, on, on sports across the board and really our, our, our society? Right. Well, I knew it was going to have a major impact um, in baseball in general because of who I was, what I represented to the game in the past, the records I had set, uh, the things that I have accomplished and the way I see uh, accomplished them. So... I knew that uh, people were going to take it me very serious when I wrote this book. 
A guy like uh, Barry Bonds, there's speculation. You've never seen him use steroids. Correct. Okay. You have your thoughts on that. Well, there was one specific incident. Uh, we had a home run hitting competition in Vegas. The, the, I think it was the Big League Challenge it was called. And I remember seeing him in the clubhouse with the other players, and I took off my, my shirt, and I was about 255. I was ripped. I was like a bodybuilder, and he screamed across the room, you know, what the hell have you been doing? But the word hell, he used the word, the F word. What the hell? Real loud so people can actually see me. I noticed that during the off season, uh, Bonds put on about 30 pounds of muscle, and when I saw and when I heard about him in spring training, he was 250 pounds, and I said, "Wow, it's only one way to put on 30 pounds of muscle in four or five month period. That's what steroids." And what happened? He went on and shattered the home run record. What about uh, steroids? Then, when you go off them, it causing injury or your body breaking down. Are I don't, we seeing that in today's game at all? No, I've never really analyzed that, and I, I think people right away put a negative spin on it, saying, okay, he's injured, must be because of steroids. No, because maybe, maybe your body naturally breaks down at certain times. Uh, but are, are you guilty, your career? You would have never had a major league career if you didn't use the steroids at, at the level we know it, right? Do, do you? you know, I say because for myself, I was one in the million in a sense was I really needed this clinically because, like I said, I had you know, dysteses, arthritis, scoliosis, and for myself, it helped. Um, I truly believe that I was an anomaly because I needed it physically to have the muscle density to be able to stand up straight. So you don't see it as, as cheating or breaking the rules? Um, I don't know. I, I think everyone has a different perspective. I mean, now it is. Well, right? today they are describing it as that because I guess uh, cheating will be described as uh, making the playing field uneven. Right, you cork a bat, you mark sure. the ball. I mean, you use illegal sure. drugs. Uh, so that's... that would be in a sense of cheating, but... Eventually, if I would have gone to a doctor and gotten a prescription to use steroids, well, that would have been cheating if I clinically needed it. Who knows? Uh, should uh, records set during that steroid era that, that we know of, should they have an asterisk by them in your book? It's impossible to judge what steroids do to each individual. Every individual is different. Every individual has a you know genetic disposition that's different from the other. So how are we going to say if... This individual used steroids, you know, he hit 70 home runs. So there's no way to know now. We can't it, it, be sure. It's impossible. There's going to be no but there'll asterisk. there'll be doubt. There's only going to be doubt, but there's going to be no asterisk. There's no way you can determine by any scale how much steroids helped each individual. It's impossible. Uh, you are suing baseball? Is this true? Um, we have spoken about this. We have thought about this for a while, and my attorney and I uh, and a group of other individuals, other attorneys, are definitely going to sue Major League Baseball. Over... Um, over the incident of uh, blackballing me from the game of baseball, and my, probably my attorney can answer these questions a okay, lot more. Okay, but depth. it's something. There, now, there's a lot of legalities to it. All right, uh, and have you had any players, even privately, even after the congressional hearing, come to you and say, "Jose, uh, I agree with what you said, or I believe in what you said"? Um, no player has come near me. No player has called me, and I truly believe, especially active players, they are bound to Major League Baseball. They they, they cannot contact me at all. One one, one of my Better friends was Roger Clemens, and he, he, he cannot speak with me. Uh, speaking of Roger, pitchers, you think pitchers have used uh, sure. either steroids? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And how, how it helps them? I mean, how? Uh, recuperative measures. Uh, depending on which steroid you use, there are certain water based steroids that help you with quick muscle twitch fiber. Uh, certain steroids help you uh, with the swelling aspect. So the issue in baseball is to recuperate as fast as possible. All right, we'll uh, come back with the Jose Canseco to wrap things up here on CMI in just a moment. Coming up on the Chris Myers interview. You're angry at, at baseball or you, you still love the game itself? I love the game of baseball in the simplest forms, you know, the ballpark, the grass, the hot dogs, the fans. I just can't stand the corruptness. Coming up on CMI, Jose Canseco reveals how a tragic loss helped push him towards steroids. I dedicated to my mom on her deathbed that I would become the best baseball player, the best athlete in the world. 
Also on the way, Chris digs deep to determine how huge an impact the steroid revelations will have on Conseco's legacy. So you can go to sleep at night and say, Jose Conseco is not the guy that tried to take down baseball. No matter what I feel, perception is reality. That's next on CMI, the Chris Myers interview. You're watching the Chris Myers interview with Jose Canseco. And look out. Deep to left. It is gone. Home run number 400 for Jose Canseco. Welcome back to CMI with Jose Canseco as we, we sit here in your home. And, and thanks for, uh, for having us in. Uh, not a lot of baseball memorabilia or Jose None. Canseco <laughs> items. You have sold None. off what, hundreds of items. Um, not really sold them off. I have them in a very secure place, and uh, you know I spoke about it before. Definitely, I'm going to get rid of all of it. No, right. I, I will not have any memories around my house or anything. You're angry at, at baseball, or are you you still love the game itself? No, I'm not angry at baseball. I love the game of baseball. I love the game of baseball in its simplest forms. You know, the ballpark, the grass, the hot dogs, the fans. I just can't stand the corruptness of the game. Uh, the politics. Don't you think we've seen some progress there already in the last? Well, I, I think we've seen months. progress because progress has been forced upon Major League Baseball through con through Congress. But I guarantee you, if my book Juice had never been written, Congress would have never taken a step to try to. They were waiting for this book. I'm wondering why they hadn't yes, looked definitely. into this. Yes, definitely. I truly believe Congress was waiting for the book. Uh, they wanted to see what the contents were of this actual book, then then to take action after it. They uh, definitely needed a catalyst. Uh, it, where you are in your life now, I want to go back to, to in the mid-80s when your mom passed away, okay, and you had yet, not yet made it to the, to the major leagues. Yes. All right, you, you know, something you talk about in your book, and it's mm -hmm. uh, an important part of your life, uh, that you couldn't really be there or at least let her know how you felt about things before she, she passed on. Right. Um, I remember that day vividly. I flew in. I remember my sister telling me, you know, mom's sick, come home, and I had no idea what was going on. So I flew in. I was playing at that time with uh, Modesto A's. And I had flown in, uh, went straight from the airport to the hospital, went where my mom was, and she was gone. She uh, died from a uh, hemorrhage in her, in her brain. And I, uh, you know, first time I cried so much in my life, I could not believe it as, as a grown man. And I, you know, I, I spoke with her. She had never gotten a chance to see me play baseball. Um, it had something to do with your motivation to be great? Yes. At, at that time, before that, I really had no motivation to play baseball. I was kind of like going one day at a time. Um, I had some talent, but really didn't have the mindset for it. And you know, I dedicated to my mom on her deathbed that I would become the best baseball player, the best athlete in the world, no matter what it took. And I did. What do you think she would say about this book or this steroid discussion? You know, my mom was so old-fashioned, she probably wouldn't understand the subject of steroids. I don't think a lot of people do. Right. I don't think a lot of people understand it. They would just see it as some type of chemicals that are illegal. Would and she be proud of what you did? Uh, you know, my dad is. My dad says, who's you know, still the with truth. Us? Yeah, who's still with us. My dad says, you know, tell the truth. Always tell the truth, then you have nothing to worry about. So, you know, hopefully my mom uses it the same way. How accountable, though, do you feel yourself for making mistakes or maybe not the best decisions Oh, I like like any anyone in this world in this world I've made mistakes. I've made bad bad decisions and uh, I, I think for myself I've definitely paid for it in certain aspects. But uh, I mean we're human beings. We're 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 going to make mistakes and the only thing you could try to do is not really look back but but try to correct them sometimes. And again, your reasons for writing the book in a sentence or two, why? There were multiple reasons. Um, number one, to tell my true story, finally, what happened to Jose Canseco. Uh, a story where it would not be manipulated by the media. It would not be lied about, changed, distorted. It was basically my words to the book and to, and to my fans, basically. But it turned into a lot of things afterwards and turned into, obviously, you know, getting back at Major League Baseball. So that was part of it. it. It was definitely a, a motivation of it. It was, it, it was in there. And, I mean... The more I thought about it, 
uh, the way Major League Baseball treated me. And the way Major League Baseball has in the past blackballed athletes, it's sickening. And it should, it should not happen. Well, I'll just read it before we let you go. From your book, Steroids of the Future, by the time my eight-year-old daughter Josie has graduated from high school, a majority of all professional athletes in all sports will be taking steroids. And believe it or not, that's good news. Uh, I have a hard time agreeing with that now, and I would think you would too. Absolutely. Uh, you have to understand the book has been two years in the making. Some of the state statements that were made two years ago, uh, I've definitely noticed that they don't apply to today because even myself doing a little more investigation on now we've got issues of cloning, gene doping, gene manipulation. So steroids to me, I've got to change that statement because steroids will become obsolete in three, four more years. All right, but, but will players find ways, whether it's growth, growth hormones or some type, to always beat the testing system to get that edge? Absolutely. Wherever there is an industry that's a billion-dollar industry, wherever there's 20, 30, 40 million dollar contracts to be made, um, wherever there are chemicals that do not have uh, testings developed to find out if the chemical is present, absolutely. How, how is your health right now these days? Feel good, and so hopefully no, I look good. <laughs> so no, uh, no side effects, from, although you did tell me you tried Botox. I tried Botox one time and it didn't work. What are they? Uh, they used a lot of it. They, the, uh, the doctor told me they used so much Botox it was incredible. But he said because uh, I was an athlete for 20 years and uh, physically I'm so muscle dense that it would not work. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's uh, what he said. But you didn't have any side effects from your years of steroid use. That that that's my point uh, uh, in terms of physical decay, the body breaking down. Some people no. thought later in your career that that's why you were so often injured. No. Towards the latter part of my career, I was not injured at all. You've written a book, you're going to do a movie, um, but in the end here, we always classify hero, goat in sports. Do you feel more like a hero or more like a goat with, with the way things have ended up? I have no idea. Do you care? I have, no matter what I feel, perception is reality. No matter who I really am, perception is reality. Uh, no matter if I'm a good guy or a bad guy, perception is reality. So I think today, because we live in a such a, a media heightened society that we are losing contact with who individuals really are. But so you can go to sleep at night and say Jose Canseco is not the guy that tried to take down baseball. I'm a guy that was in it and I'm trying to help baseball. Well, I, I think it's a combination of both. I think it's a combination of trying to take down the bad apples of baseball and trying to help baseball recuperate itself again. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank right? you, Chris. Good luck. Jose Canseco with us on CMO.